any nation that wishes to advance technologically and play big in the games of robotics and artificial intelligence must invest significantly in education and make it possible for more students to take up science, technology, engineering and mathematics subjects. This is exactly what Russ Fisher Ives and his co-founders are doing with RoboRave International. He joins us on the show to share his thoughts. Robotics brings in the technology for the 21st century. As we move to make our machines smarter so they run more efficiently, they use resources better, we start to take our old machines and we start to bring in computer coding and, and microprocessors so our old machines become smart machines. All right, how are you going to do that? Well, you have to understand sensors. You have to understand how to code, how to write the instructions here so the machine runs it. And then, once you've got your instructions in, does it do what you want? Well, that's where you get into coding. And we don't want to teach coding to teach coding. We want to engage kids with robotics so that they get excited and they take a little bit of knowledge and they get excited to do something and they go, teach me more. And so why robotics in Nigeria? Well, why not? You know, Nigeria is the fastest growing country in this continent. Uh, it's got a very young population. It's got the opportunity to bring skills for employment. And when you plant the seeds, we really see ourselves as farmers. We're planting seeds. If you plant those seeds in the minds of curious kids, not the adults, we need the adults, but the curiosity of kids, then you have gardens full of new ideas. And so I think Nigeria is perfect, a perfect setting to plant the seeds for the next wave of, of entrepreneurs for Africa. How long has RoboRave been in existence and who funds it? Our very first RoboRave was in 2001. Um, it was with 25 high school kids and it's expanded now into five continents, 17 countries. Who funds it? And that is the hardest question. The funding kind of changes. We get funds from our registration. We get funds from the different events giving us an annual fee. We get donations from companies, from foundations. So we're constantly looking for resources. We are really hoping to find a international company, and Sony just signed on for China, for an international company to say, this is something I want my name all over the world. And so that we can really have the, the real comfortable sustainability. Do you think RoboRave can help improve the number of women in technology? We do, and we've got the data to show that we run at the international. Uh, between 40 to 45 percent of the participants are girls. And one of the ways we did it, in the early years, we didn't have girls. It was all boys. So we said, well, let's give teams points if they have a girl. So they went and got a girl, and the girl just sat there. And the girls got bored and they left. So a couple of girls came to me about eight years ago, nine, maybe ten years ago. I said, we want to quit. Why? The boy won't let us play. Well, form your own team. But we can form our all-girls team? Absolutely. So by forming all-girl teams, they really get to share and touch and do what the boys have been doing while they watch. So this started a wave. And the girls started coming in and beating the boys. Oh, the pride. They set up. So, Roborave does bring the girls in, but the overall problem is not just bringing girls in, it's valuing what they do, listening to what they know, because a lot of women go into STEM as professionals, three quarters, excuse me, three quarters of them within the first five years leave the profession, because men don't value what they're doing. We have a system, an infrastructure problem there. So, create all women companies. There are, you know, give me a challenge and I'll find a way around it. Give me an obstacle and I'll go under it, over it, through it. You can't stop passion. It just, it's a fire that burns. So, we think we're doing it. We can show that we're doing it. We're also bringing in Native American students. About 20% of our, our students are from indigenous cultures. Uh, we have, you know, Spanish, Chinese, Mandarin, or uh, Japanese, I mean, languages. 
it, it's just it's it, it's working. Tell us, what how many kids have been able to reach worldwide? It's a hard question to ask, but it's a with with the growth into Asia, especially into South America, we, we've we've reached well over a hundred thousand easily. Uh, it, it could be closer to two hundred thousand. The Chinese have made RoboRave an official robotics program for all of China. It's got the government seal, an official robotics program. So that means it's an honor to play. So they have many more students that play locally, but never come to the full event. But in three years, four years, they went from 90 students, they had 1,300. You know, their problem? Space. They have more kids who want to play than they have space. All right? So, so Ross, I noticed you're using these for yep. a lot of the training and programs you're doing. Yep. Take us through these. How can all this right. help students learn robotics? Oh. All right. First of all, this is just one type. RoboRave is open to all types of robots. So why we're using this one, it could be many other types. So we don't want to just focus on this one robot. But what this robot has are the parts that all the robots have. So first of all, you've got motors. So they got to understand rotation and speed and distance. Sensors. So I need you to do this with me. It's a little thing. Every robot has this. Input. Come on, you can do it. Input, process, output. So input, process, output. So you pick up your cell phone. When you press, that's an input. Inside, it processes it and gives you a new screen or calls somebody. So that little phone is a robot. Your TV changer, when you lock your car, these are all robotic because there's an input, and there's a process, and there's an output. Microwave, dishwasher, TVs, coffee pots. This thing has sensors. So we input our ideas. If I could take this case, there's a microprocessor, a computer chip that takes that instruction and moves the motor. Well, input comes from the light sensors. Input comes from the from the Wally eyes, you know, the ultrasonic. So this is my, these are my ears and these are my eyes. So you can teach a child about human anatomy and how it's represented in a robot. You can deal with speed, distance, velocity. You can look at problem solving, code, variables, equations. This is not a toy. In the right hands, it becomes a tool to teach science, technology, engineering, and math. And when that thing moves on the floor, the kids want to do more. So it's a, it's, it's a magnet. Our biggest problem, we have two. Getting the teachers to bring it in because they don't have experience. The second problem is when we give a robot to a child, good luck getting it back. They want to keep playing. So you mean every single child that goes to Robo in Nigeria will have us? Oh. Just not just that. There, there are so many different robots, so many different designs. Depends on their challenge. Some they're trying to go up a very steep ramp. Some they're trying to find candles and they have fans and they're blowing out candles. Some are jousting with each other. So there's ten different challenges. So every robot has things added to it to do the challenge. Finally, Ross, there's an argument that artificial intelligence and robotics can actually take the job of mankind. Yeah. Do you agree? It's, it's a really loaded question. It's got so many different directions. The bottom line is, we are the ones that are coding. We control the information that goes in. The real issue is we're now building robots that are learning from their environment and writing their own code. So do we have the possibility of robots acquiring more skill than we put in? Yes. So that means we need to argue this position, how do we control? How do we shut the robot off? 2001 Space Odyssey was great when HAL took over the spaceship. And then when they tried to shut HAL down, HAL stopped them. So we have to be the ones who know how to shut it off. But they are going to teach each other. I've seen robots teach each other and build. So it's already here. So we have the responsibility of getting our kids to understand the ethics around robotics. And that's our new challenge for 2018. Students will debate the ethics of robotics as our new challenge.
interesting times ahead. Thank you, Russell, for being on Tech today. Uh, absolute pleasure. And all the best in First time to Nigeria, but not our last. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's show. Do follow us on social media. And don't forget, you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukweka Agbata.